Hey guys, welcome back to Office 365 Concepts. I hope you all are doing well. Today we are going to talk about Teams architecture. We will learn how Microsoft Teams is designed, what are the services provided by Teams. We will talk about data storage, where exactly Teams data is stored. We will talk about member roles and their permissions in Teams. And we will talk about the admin roles to manage Teams. Microsoft Teams has several components and services. You can integrate applications within a Teams channel. You can communicate with people inside or outside of your organization using chat. You can access your OneDrive account directly from Microsoft Teams application. Your Teams files are stored in OneDrive for business. You can create meetings. You can use calling feature in Teams. If your admin has enabled voicemail, you will receive voicemail messages in your mailbox. And then we have contacts, images, stickers, and messages. If you're watching this series from the beginning, you are already aware of the terms that we are going to discuss in this video. If you are missed to watch the previous videos, do not worry. You can find all the links within the description of this video, or you can refer to the playlist. When we create a Microsoft Teams, be it a private team, public team, or org wide team, it creates a Microsoft 365 group in Exchange Online with the same name. It also creates a team site in SharePoint Online. Also, when you create a team, a shared mailbox and a calendar is also created. When you create a Teams channel, a folder is created in Teams site under document library with the same name as channel. Whatever files you upload to the Teams channel are stored under that folder. Every Teams channel has tabs where you can upload files, you can create OneNotes, or you can add applications and so on. Members of a channel can communicate within a channel, they can post messages, and they can reply to the messages. So where is Microsoft Teams data stored? The messages that you post in a team or a channel are stored in the individual mailbox in Exchange Online. When we enable retention policies on Teams to retain the data, that data is stored in Cosmos database in Azure. Images are stored in Azure blob storage. The files that we upload in Teams channel are stored in the document library of the Teams site. And the files that we share in chat are stored in OneDrive for Business account of the user who shares the file in the chat. The voicemail messages are stored in the individual mailbox of the user in Exchange Online. When you have a voicemail message in Teams, you receive an email with the notification. When you record a Teams meeting, that recording is stored in the OneDrive account of the user. Calendar and meetings are stored in Exchange Online within user's mailbox. Contacts are stored in Exchange Online. In Microsoft Teams, every user has a role. When we add a user in Teams, we can add him as a member, as an owner, or as a guest user. But every role has a set of privileges. The owner of the team can do everything within the team. For example, create a team, delete a team, he can archive a team, renew the team, and so on. But the members and the guest users have very limited privileges compared to the owner. An owner of the team can control the role of a member or a guest user. That means the owner can decide what a member can do in a team or what changes a guest user can make within the team. But a member cannot control an owner or a guest user can't control what an owner can do. But the owner of the team can control what a member of the team or a guest user of the team can do within a team. In Microsoft 365, there are six admin roles to manage Microsoft Teams as an admin. We know the global administrator can do everything within the tenant. But let's assume we do not want to assign global admin role to everyone who is managing Microsoft Teams. So as a global administrator, we can assign limited access to the other admins. To manage Microsoft Teams service, we have six roles. We have Teams administrator who can manage the Teams service and manage and create Microsoft 365 groups. Then we have Teams communication administrator who can manage calling and meetings features within Microsoft Teams. We have Teams communication support engineer who can troubleshoot common issues within Teams by using advanced tools. Next is Teams communication support specialist who can troubleshoot communication issues within Teams by using basic tools. Then we have Teams device administrator who can manage team devices. And the last one is 
Teams Telephony Administrator who can manage telephony features in Microsoft Teams. So that is all for now. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.